The first LP I ever made was with Purple. The first time I ever played to any audience larger than 300 people or something. Mm -hmm. It was in Copenhagen with Purple. But what was it like to be uh, exposed to such a mass audience suddenly? Good. A lot of fun. <laughs> Great women. But could you cope with it? Oh, yeah. yeah. At that time, uh, Deep Purple were very nice human beings. You know? At that time? At that time. So, now I ask you, what was the reason for breaking up Deep Purple? Uh, because it, it was not so much a group in the end, it was more five egomaniacs fighting for the spotlight. Which I'm not, I'm not interested in competing or racing, you know. I'm very happy with what I'm capable of doing as a person and as a performer. And I do the best I can. I've just done the best I could under the circumstances there. Mm. And uh, I'm not interested in fighting to, to, uh, to get that across. Mm -hmm. I just want to do it. Just enjoy it. It's fun. But then you started your solo career last year and you had to start all over again. So playing small venues, etc. What was that like? Much better. Why? Uh, there's more communication rather than separation. See, with Deep Purple, I had two fucking enormous security people who took care of me, bodyguards. And after a concert, I played on a concert like stages that were 30 feet above the audience. I couldn't touch the audience. Mm -hmm. I couldn't speak to the audience without going, uh, uh, you know. Um, and after the concert, I signed like one, somebody brought photographs in and I signed them. I never met my audience. Mm -hmm. Never met my audience. Um, and then into the limousine, after the hotel, then the airport, never meeting the people that you were playing to. It was like a straitjacket, you know? <laughs> Why did you call your group White Snake? I know it's the time my favorite music is cock rock. Uh, you know, white Snake is just a more polite name for a cock. You know. And I'm not black. <laughs> <laughs> but in concert, you still perform the old uh, Deep Purple songs, especially the ones you wrote. Them. Yeah. But you do that to, uh, for your public or yeah. for yourself? Or? No, because we haven't got enough new songs That's as a group. It. We've only had one day's rehearsal for this. That was two two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, when I hear your albums, part of it, for me, I have the impression you are going, going to do a kind of uh, Robert Plant vocals. And on the other part, you have this rhythm and blues and soul ballads, for which I think your voice is much better suited. Yeah. Um, you see, let me explain that I, I have no wish to do a so solo career as you imagine, or as record companies say. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a group singer nothing else and when I left purple the, the worst thing in the world was be, because I was a very hot property with being a member of purple and many people wanted pieces of the pie mm -hmm. so these people couldn't settle on their piece of the pie so I was denied the opportunity to perform in live concert so I never had a group mm -hmm. so all my music was written at the piano in Bavaria in the living room with the sun coming in and you can't walk and fucking roll in a living room you know what I mean you have to have this kind of experience to write about it you know? mm -hmm. so all my songs have been oh, no. I'm so fucking sad you know? is that also the reason you didn't accept any offer from other groups I got offers from the only offer I would have accepted in that time is from Jeff Beck and that fell through that was a group with Jeff Beck Willie Weeks and Andy Newmark and a guy called Jean Roussel and I said yeah I'm interested you know and uh, then that group fell to pieces. There was no, I didn't even meet the people, you know. The only offers I had was like Uriah Heat, Black Sabbath, uh, mm -hmm. all the rubbish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but what was your reason for doing Listen, I played with the best rubbish in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like it. <laughs> On your last album you had this Bobby Blend uh, song, which oh, I like yeah. very, very much. What was your reason for choosing a song like that? Um, when we were holding, like, when Mickey and I were holding auditions for the group before Christmas, thank you. Um, one of the songs that we had a jam session on was then Love in the Heart of the City. And it came out so, thank you, so good <laughs> that we decided to record it. Because mm -hmm. it is a very beautiful song. Mm -hmm. And I feel it very much, and so do the boys. Mm -hmm. Because there ain't very much Love in the Heart of the City if you're on your own. Copenhagen, Munich, London, anything. If you're on your own, it doesn't make a fucking difference whether Hollywood says that London is the best city or Los Angeles. It ain't if you're on your own. It's the worst. Nathalie Kester in gesprek met David Coverdale, die we nu gaan horen samen met Mick Moody op gitaar, Bernie Marston ook op gitaar, Neil Murray op bas en David Dowell op drums. David Coverdale's White Snake. 